Marvel has always been regarded as the best when it comes to superhero movies, but this year they are proving that their series can hit just as hard. Rolling into the year with several new series and with even more coming out in the years to come. The latest addition to the Marvel series family is Miss Marvel. The series follows the life of young Kamala Khan, her struggle as a Pakistan-American citizen, and her additional struggle with her newfound powers. The original Miss Marvel character debuted in 2013, making her a rather recent addition to the MCU. The character is the first Muslim to headline her own Marvel comic book. The first episode of the series dropped on June 8th, and it has Marvel fans going wild with all of its blink and you'll miss it Easter eggs. In this episode, we will be breaking down the episode and pointing out as many Easter eggs as possible. Stick around, because there are a lot of them. This whole episode is littered with Marvel Easter eggs. You could watch it over and over again and discover new ones every single time. Of course, the Marvel character with the most Easter eggs is Captain Marvel, since the show's main character is obsessed with her. Her room is covered in Captain Marvel drawings from different timelines, even all the way back to the 1977 costume design by Dave Cockrum. She also created a 10-part series on YouTube about Captain Marvel. Similar to the Kamala we meet in the series, the comic version of Kamala is also a Captain Marvel stan. She was wearing a Captain Marvel costume the first time she got her powers, just like we see with this Kamala. The comic book characters eventually changes her costume to something more unique, which we will also see the real Kamala do eventually. They have similar stories, but what they don't share is powers. This version of Miss Marvel, unlike her comic book counterpart, gets her powers from Nega bands that are similar to the ones worn by the original Miss Marvel, who is now Captain Marvel. The Nega bands are made with Kree technology, which makes sense since Carol Danvers is half Kree. But what doesn't make sense is how Kamala, or more specifically her grandmother, gets her hands on Kree technology. Hopefully, this is a question the series will answer with time. The comic book Kamala was a human with Latin and human DNA. Her powers were activated by the Terrigan Bomb, and she gained the ability to stretch her body in any shape she wanted, which led to her taking on the catchphrase, Embiggen. But fear not, comic book fans, because just like in the comics, in the series, Kamala's fists actually embiggen. Although, whether she will say the words like in the comic book version is still unknown, Kamala and other new Marvel characters like Moon Knight, who also got his own series, are ushering in the new generation of Marvel heroes, seeing as we are in Phase 4 of the MCU. The episode is titled Generation Y, which references the new generation of Marvel superheroes. Her character also shares some similarities to the Spider-Man character, with them both being teenagers who attend high school. There's also a scene where Kamala takes a driving test, which takes us right back to Spider-Man Homecoming when Peter took his driving test. Unfortunately, she fails her driving test and meets with her new school counselor, Gabe Willow Wilson, whose name is a direct reference to G. Willow Wilson, the writer of the original Miss Marvel comics. When Kamala arrives at the school, there is a plaque in front with the names of the people who worked on the Miss Marvel comics including G. Willow Wilson, Adrienne Alfona, Jamie McKelvey, and lots more. We are introduced to Kamala's frenemy, Zoe, who seems like she might have a bigger role in the series with time. During the gym scene, we see the gap between the 2019 and 2023 banners, which indicates when the snap happened. There's a 2024 banner, which lets us know that the series takes place in 2025. In Kamala's YouTube series, we follow the life of Captain Marvel and everything she did after the big fight with Thanos. Kamala calls her Earth's mightiest hero, which is a classic Avengers tagline. Final chapter to my 10-part series on Earth's mightiest hero, Captain Marvel. The final episode of her YouTube series depicts the fight with Thanos. The end of her series is another not so subtle nod to the fact that we are done with Marvel Phase 3 and moving on to Phase 4. Her room also has a drawing of a sloth with wings, referencing her YouTube name, Sloth Baby Production. While her YouTube channel gives us insight into Captain Marvel's life after Infinity Wars, we also see what the other Avengers have been up to. 
Scott Lang started a podcast called Big Me, Little Me, which is an obvious Ant-Man reference. We also see a YouTube video titled Ant-Man and Wasp Romantic Vacation in Paris, which lets us know what Ant-Man did after the Infinity Wars. While biking down the street, Kamala and her best friend Bruno Corelli pass a Green Co. building that references the Hulk. Her parents also dress up like the Hulk and try to get her to join in, which Kamala finds mortifying. You can't come with me, not dressed like that because it is so humiliating. Kamala also makes a joke about zombie Captain Marvel. And coincidentally, there is a spinoff series about Marvel zombies in the works. Also, from the vibe we get from Kamala and Bruno, it seems like they might end up in a relationship before the series is over. Kamala and Bruno make the final touches to the Captain Marvel outfit she wants to wear for AvengerCon, which, as the name implies, is a convention for all things Avengers. Kamala receives a box from her grandmother, which her mother has labeled as junk. That is junk. She finds a pair of golden bangles and decides to add them to her Captain Marvel costume. During the episode, her mother complains about her constant daydreaming, saying she's just like her grandmother, which indicates that we might get a little more backstory about her grandmother. Her parents don't give her permission to attend AvengerCon, so she sneaks out with Bruno instead. The convention is littered with more Easter eggs than Kamala's room, if that's even possible. Right before she enters, the banner above says Camp Lehigh, which is where Captain America took the super soldier syndrome for the first time. Bruno is dressed as a version of Iron Man, but he later changes into a Bruce Banner costume, sporting a lab coat and a flannel shirt in typical Bruce fashion. There's also a woman dressed as Hulk to reference the upcoming She-Hulk series. The convention has a stand for each Marvel character, even the Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a drawing that references Ant-Man calling Captain America's butt, America's ass. A drawing with the classic Captain America phrase, I can do this all day. And a memorial wall for Black Widow and Iron Man. The vendors at the Ant-Man stand are dressed like ants to reference Ant-Man's worker ants. And travel brochures to visit Wakanda were shared at the Black Panther stand. And on the bus, there was a girl dressed up as a Captain America USO show dancer. Bruno and Kamala run into Zoe, who is wearing an inaccurate version of the Captain Marvel costume. We also get a cameo from Ryan Panagos, aka Agent M, Marvel's new media VP. He is the MC of the Captain Marvel costume contest. When Kamala gets on stage for the costume competition, the bangles power up and blast uncontrollably causing chaos and almost killing Zoe when a hammer swings towards her. Kamala saves Zoe from the hammer. Zoe and Kamala's relationship might be similar to Peter and Flash's, where Zoe would dislike Kamala but love Miss Marvel. It seems that her bangles are powered by electricity, and we see that the moment they are activated. The bangles gain power from the electrical devices around her and briefly send her to an alternate dimension where she sees beings with glowing eyes. Because the bangles are powered by electricity, it means that if or when Kamala does fight besides Captain Marvel, she will have an unlimited source of energy since Captain Marvel is like this battery of cosmic power. When Kamala returns home, her mom catches and grounds her, begging her to focus on her own story instead of superheroes. I wish that you would just focus on your story. In the post credit scene, the same characters who interrogated Peter Parker, Agents P. Clearly and Sadie Deaver from the Department of Damage Control, the DODC, are watching a clip of Kamala using her powers. The clip is glitching because Kamala's negabands were drawing power from the phone that was recording. The agents immediately plan to head over to Jersey City, so episode two will likely revolve around them trying to capture her. The series has six episodes in total, which will be dropping every Wednesday, just like Kamala's Sloth Baby Production YouTube videos.